he was raised poor on a farm. Um, Polish and Ukrainian parents who believed that pretty much he had kids to be a slave. And so he was working on the farm from a really young age and the horse, Big Bill, would kick rocks at him. Big Bill would run him in trees. He had problems with Bill. And he built, his own, built a tractor. He took parts that were around the farm and parts that he could acquire and built a tractor. He ended up in racing, I think like most of the guys of that era, because they had come back from the war and they were adrenaline junkies. And all of a sudden there is no adrenaline in their life. Going to work every day and hanging out with the wife and kids didn't, didn't do it. And they got into racing to feed that need. For dinner at night, during race week in Daytona Beach, we would have the Unzers, the Allisons, um, A.J. Foyt, Herb Fischel. We had these luminaries at the dinner table because we, had, we were prepared for up to 10 people. Any given race night, if it was going to be more than 10, then my mom had, he was going to call her and give her advance notice, but we could have a house full of people. Eight years after his death, people still call me and they, te they tell me stories. They tell me about how he helped them along the way. Um, you know, race teams in the middle of the night who needed to use the machine shop and he'd go out and open up the shop so they could get in. Guys that had an engine blow and he gave them one that he had on the floor for them to use. And he's not the only one. There's so much that a lot of those racers did to help each other out. It was a whole different culture. the guy that brought the first wing to Indy. This is the guy that brought the sidecar where the driver sat on a pod on the side. Um, it let Racing let his imagination run wild, especially Indy racing. It let him create things and as an offshoot, I mean he worked on spark plug projects, he worked on manifold projects, he worked on variable ratio power steering, he worked on braking technology that's in everybody's cars today. But because he was working under the guise of various motor companies at the time, I mean, he danced all over. He was with Chevy, he was with Ford, he was with Pontiac. As he danced in and out of those guys, he was working under the auspices of the motor company, so his inventions were credited to them. You have to be able to be proud of who you are each day in this world, whether you've made big accomplishments or not. And so he never lost sight of the fan. He would never ever sign your autograph without shaking your hand and looking you in the eye and telling you thank you. He just never lost sight of being who he was and being proud of it. And if what he had contributed was important to other people, that was great. But he was very comfortable with who he was and he was proud of what he'd done himself. He was human. He wanted to be appreciated. He was going to do what he was going to do, whether you agreed or not. I mean, that's how he came up with his hot vapor engine. There's still wild schools of thought that say that can't possibly work, even though it was running on the streets. So he wanted to be accepted. And he was hurt that Daytona had passed him by, but he still did what he wanted to do.